Good morning, Church. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, before we hear the preach message, we will watch our Christ the King kids perform their Christmas production and teen leaders' puppet show. This is a way for us to hear God's good news through them. So enjoy the performance and let's open our hearts to listen to the good news of Christmas. It's Christmas time once again in the stores, in the schools, in the church, and at home. Holiday preparations stir us up into such a whirlwind of activity that it's sometimes difficult to catch our breath and reflect upon the very event we're celebrating, the birth of our Savior. If we adults have trouble keeping Christ in Christmas, is it any wonder the children get so caught up in the glitter and excitement that they forget about Jesus too? We need to remind them, and we need to remind ourselves, that God became a man and dwelt among us, and that He became as tiny as a child. Let's become children once again. Let's visit a kid's church virtual classroom and hear this Christmas story again. Let's see the miracle of Christmas through the eyes of a child. Good morning, CTK kids. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Well, it's getting closer and closer to Christmas. Have you been doing anything to get ready? I made a list of everything I want. A scooter, a remote-controlled car, an electric train set. I'm going to be in a play at school, and I get to be a snow princess. Mom's going to take me Christmas shopping. I'm going to see the Festival of Lights. I'm going to celebrate Christmas with, with I'm going my to family the US in my America. grandmother's house, probably. Okay, okay. I can see you're all very busy with holiday preparations. Today, we're going to get ready for Christmas, too. I'm going to read you a story. Frosty the Snowman? How about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? How about the poem Trust the Night Before Christmas? Yes, I like that one. No, none of those. My story is from the Bible, the true story of what happened on the first Christmas, the real Christmas story. Oh, that story. Mary, Joseph, shepherds, angels, that's old stuff. Yes, it's an old story. What's wrong with that? Nothing really, but we heard it before. It just isn't very exciting. It's kind of boring. Maybe you found it boring because you haven't understood it before. You need to get into the story. How do we do that? Imagine you're there. Try to understand how each person felt. Put yourselves in their places. Put ourselves in their places? Yes, use your imagination. Pretend you're a part of the story and imagine what it would be like if it happened to you. Do you think you can do that? All right, then. Imagine yourself in the city of Nazareth, in the home of a young woman named Mary. An angel is about to speak to her. Can you visualize it? Yes, yes, I can. I think I can see them. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to name him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am your Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Wow, she must have been scared when that angel appeared. But the angel brought good news, so she must have been happy too. But what about Joseph? An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because she will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, 
he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. I think I know what happened next. They went to Bethlehem. Let's see if you're right. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So they packed up and went to Bethlehem, right? Poor Mary, that's a lot of work for a pregnant lady. She had to get their clothes ready and pack the car. Wait a minute, they didn't have clothes back then, did they? No, they didn't. Now listen. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And in Bethlehem, they found that there was no room for them at the inn. That part always makes me mad. They had to go to a crime stable. I wouldn't want to sleep with the smelly animals. But they had to. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds there too, weren't there? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. When did the wise men come? They came later. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. They went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Is that the end of the story? No, in a way, it's just the beginning. The baby Jesus grew up to become a man, but a very special man because he was God as well. He spent his time here on earth loving people, teaching them, and healing them. And though he was God and had all the power of God, he let himself be put to death on the cross. I know why it was for us. He took the punishment for our sins. That's right. To everyone who believes that Jesus died for their sins and who wants more than anything else to belong to him, God gives the gift of eternal life. We can know we're going to be with him forever. No gift can be greater than that, can it? No. 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 Well, that's the Christmas story. It's about the gift of life that lasts forever and ever. The best part about the story is that you can be a part of it too, if you believe. Merry Christmas, class! Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone! everyone. Merry Christmas, Christmas from IESK Kids! I really feel like I'm a part of this story, don't you? Yes. yes! Yes! I'd like to do something about it. What do you mean? I mean, we should do something for Jesus to show him that we believe. But what can we do? I've got an idea. What is it? We can all sing. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say, Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day.
shepherds watch their flocks by night. They see a bright new shining star. And then they heard a choir sing. The music seemed to come from afar. Hark thou, hear the angels sing. New King born today. And man shall live forever more. Because of
The Gospel reading for this fourth Sunday in Advent is taken from Luke 1, verse 39 to 55. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Father, open our hearts and our minds so we can hear you speak to us clearly today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent in the church calendar. It is the Sunday before Christmas. Can you believe next week is Christmas already? Where did time go? Today also happens to be the first in a long time that I shared. I want to ask you, what is it that you are looking forward this Christmas? Is it spending time with your family and friends? Especially after last year, Christmas kind of prohibits us to do so. Or is it going to a much needed holiday trip? Is it the giving and getting Christmas gift? Well, I hope you like the play that we just watched earlier. As you have seen in the play, we always make lists of things that we want for Christmas and a list of things to do during the Christmas holiday. And in doing so, we often got so caught up with the holiday preparations and end up consumed by busyness during this time of the year. The result of this, we can end up feeling that the Christmas story becomes rather dull and boring because we have forgotten the real meaning and essence of Christmas. During one of the practices for the Christmas production, one of the CTK Kids church members said adamantly like, Christmas is not boring. Christmas is very exciting. Which, even if we forgot to admit it, we agree with him. Christmas is nothing short of boring. The Christmas story in our reading is one of my favorites. I love to read Mary's Magnificat. It is definitely not a boring story. Imagine yourself being in Mary's shoes. You are no more than 15 at that time when the angel of the Lord appeared. 15 is how old my daughter is. It is mind-blowing to think that God chose you, a teenager, a child who is just at the start of entering womanhood, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior. Out of all the women that God can choose, why did He chose Mary? I imagine Mary thinking what are the qualities that she has to offer that no other women have. Not to mention the risk of death as the penalty of her condition, since she is not married yet at that time. How Mary responds to the angel earlier, saying, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true, comes from an attitude of surrender. And because of this, Mary is also said to be the model of the church. The church is to have the same attitude to God like her. After the angel visited her, 
we're told that she went to visit her older cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant at that time. During the visit, after telling her the baby in her womb leaped with joy at Mary's coming, Elizabeth comforted and affirmed Mary, You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Then Mary burst out in praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. And through the radical song she sang after, we hear her describing the upside-down kingdom that her son is bringing. She sang about God bringing judgment on the proud and the powerful, about God sending the rich, rich as in people who do think possessions can bring them fulfillment, away empty, and that God will overturn all the injustice of the world, lifting up the lowly and feed the hungry. This is not a kingdom like the world understands kingdom. Christ has come to challenge the structures of the kingdoms of the world, structure, structures that are the product of human rebellion that only bring oppression, sin, evil, and death. Mary's son has come to do what God has always done throughout history, lift up the lowly, free the enslaved, feed the hungry, give justice to the widows, the orphaned, the refugees, and the homeless. His kingdom is bringing freedom to many people who are oppressed, bondage, and enslaved. And he is inviting us, the church, people who have experienced at least the beginning of the freedom that he is giving to participate in the work of his kingdom that is about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. On our wall in our apartment, we have a reproduction of this wonderful watercolor painting. This painting is a rich symbolism of Advent. You should be able to see it on your screen. The painting is titled, Mary Consoles Eve. This picture stuns me every time I look at it. I get lost in it. The expressions, the style, the love. Pay attention to the feet of Mary. The serpent is defeated, humanity is restored, Jesus is at the center. The picture is painted by a nun, Sister Grace Remington, who lives in a monastery in Iowa, USA. Pastor Oyan bought the reproduction of the painting directly from the monastery a few years ago. And with the painting comes a poem, also written by a nun from the same monastery, Sister Columba Guare. It is a wonderful compliment to and as beautiful as the painting. Let me read it for you. O oh Eve, my mother, my daughter, life-giving Eve, do not be ashamed, do not grieve. The former things have passed away. Our God has brought us to a new day. See, I am with a child, through whom all will be reconciled. O oh Eve, my sister, my friend, we will rejoice together forever, life without end. Christmas is right around the corner. Let us once again commit to live out Jesus' upside-down kingdom in tangible ways. Let us be like Mary and say, I am the Lord's servant. Be with me according to your word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our soul magnify you, Lord, and our spirit rejoices in you, my Savior, for you have looked with favor on us. You have done great things for us, and holy is your name. You have revealed yourself as one who wishes to bring about justice and true peace among people. In a world that look away from injustice, you have called us to follow you, to live the upside-down kingdom, to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release for the captives and recovery of sight for the blind, to set a liberty for those who are oppressed, and to proclaim your love and grace to them. 
Be present with us, I yes, Christ the King, as we respond to your call. Open our eyes to the oppressed and persecuted. Fill us with compassion for the need of the homeless, the refugee. Lead us into ministries that help orphans, widows, and elderly. And give us the courage to block the path of the ungodly who exploits the poor. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen.